All right. We we good? We all right? Let everybody know we live in the group. You understand me? Let everybody know we live. How y'all doing today? This this one of the main ones I've, I've been waiting on. All these parts was the build up for this part right here, part eight. How many of y'all actually went back and studied part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? How many of y'all actually went back and studied those parts? Each part is like an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. They say you should, you should shorten up your videos and you ain't, it's just too long. Can't nobody attention, ain't no attention, ain't nobody got the attention span to, to sit there and sit there and listen to that for no hour and a half. You do everything else for an hour and a half. You do her for an hour and a half. Huh? You do everything else for an hour and a half, but when it comes to the word of God, it's an issue. And that's why people going to hell. <laughs> that's why they're going. Broad is the gateway to hell. That's what the scripture states. Narrow is the gateway to heaven. Y'all want to know what it looks like? This a road. This the broad road. This hell. That's what the scripture teaches. And this heaven right here. Narrow. Few find that road. Why is that? Hey, what's going on, Brittany? Welcome to Study with Grace, a Bible study of biblical truth. Where we dialogue up in here. This class is not church. We can talk to each other up in here. We can just stop the whole curriculum. Hey, I, I need to wait, you don't say something I don't necessarily understand. <laughs> huh? So we're gonna get this together. We're going to rightly divide the word of truth, and we're not going to be ashamed. We're going to ask questions. We're going to get this thing figured out. Welcome to part eight of you going to burn in hell with your sin. Notice the word sin is singular. It's not plural. I ain't say sins. I figured somebody would peep that by now. You're going to burn in hell with your sin. What sin could that be? Anything. This class is not church. Hey, Paulette, how you doing? You relaxed. I see you relaxed over there today. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> this class, you can do that in class. You can eat in her. You understand me? You can live it up. This class. Huh? See the blackboard? Curriculum settings. Marker, chalk, dialogue settings. It's not a monologue. Y'all know what a monologue is? No, it's not a vision board. Actually, vision boards is part of witchery. So we're going to get to the truth. And in that truth, you're going to discover, oh, I'm relieved. I ain't got to walk on eggshells no more. I ain't got to beat myself down with different sins and different things that could put me in hell. I didn't know that. So we're going to jump this thing off. But before we do, who got questions? What's up, Brooke? Y'all right? All right. Who want to jump this thing off? Who got questions? Ain't nobody perfect? Why you say that, mama? My mama said ain't nobody perfect. What you mean by that? Go on to the mic, mama. Go on to the mic. Go on to the mic so they can hear you. They can't hear you from right here. And, and say your name and your age when you get up there. <laughs> so let them know who in there. <laughs> then they go, man, that woman, that, that she, that age, and look that young? Did you see me? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. What'd I say? Ain't no, nobody perfect. perfect. <laughs> say, say your name and your oh, age. Darlene Perkins, 58. The reason why I say that because um, you can step off and do something. Backslide. What I mean by that? I said backslide. So I can backslide. Yeah, backslide mm -hmm. and do something. 
And then afterwards, we look at it and say, well, I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Oh, yes, yeah, so you can be thinking about doing something you want to do. Uh-huh. And you know you got the Holy Spirit in you, but your flesh is weak. All right. You been reading. <laughs> your flesh is weak. <laughs> but when you let that flesh take a hold of you, then you have nothing. Okay. So basically, if you think about sin and you don't act on it, are you still condemned for what you thought? For what you didn't act on? If you think about sin, are you condemned? Who know the answer to that? Absolutely. That's called a sin of what? Sin of conception, sinning in your thoughts. You ain't done nothing. You just sat down on the couch all day, full of sin. And you ain't moved nothing because you were sinning in your thoughts. How many, how many people here got a hold to their thoughts? Who can say the number five in their head and then stop saying the number five in their head without saying nothing else? I don't think we can do it. No, you can't do it. No, you can't. All right. Now stop thinking about number five. Ooh, it's hard. <laughs> Alexa say you sin just by thinking about it. That's right. Sin is potent. And that's why folks go to hell. The teachers, well, hold on. The pastors and bishops and the friends won't tell you, bro, if you don't chill out, you're going to be in hell. Oh, you can't send me to go to, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> so we're going to learn today. Hey, how's it going, Dave? Hey, everybody, welcome to Study with Grace. I need to start going on around this time. Welcome. This class is not church. I'm excited. Go back and watch part seven, where we talked about, I mean, part six, where we talked about sinning in your thoughts. Thought consists of thinking, your mind, your imagination. Watch this. It ain't just about bad things. The scriptures say cast down all imaginations, not just some. But what if they good? What if it's bad? Got to cast it down. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I say, I say, name your age again. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for Adam sinning, we wouldn't be in this predicament we in now. That's right. But the thing about it is, in the world, in this world, you know, did you know um, sin was in this world before law? That's right. Those did not know. Good job. What you say? Come on, Mama. I see. And um, those are in flesh cannot please God. That's right. Indeed, the Spirit of God lives in you. Yes. And I've been reading. That's right. See, she been she been doing what I've been asking everybody to do. Well, actually, what God commanded us to do. Second Timothy two and fifteen. Rather divide the word of truth. And every time you don't do it, you sin. Are you gonna be asked for forgiveness every second? Lord, forgive me for not reading the Bible. Lord, forgive me for not reading the Bible. <laughs> you think you good? You not? You gonna be in hell? Laying up with him all night? Yep, you are gonna be in hell. Huh? Not studying your scriptures? Yep. You'll be right there in hell. You can't say, well, I didn't know. Because the Bible speaks on unintentional sin. Go back and go to, uh, what was that, part two of this series. Where we talked about intentional sin and not knowing. Well, I didn't know sin. It's in there. You don't get no pass. You can't stand before a holy God in a holy court and say, I don't know, with sin in you. You got to remember, we are not sinners because we sin. But we sin because we are sinners. Y'all understand that? Sinning don't make us sinners. We are already sinners. That's why we sin. Who got questions? 
Well, I ain't did nothing all day. I'm all right. It don't matter. You a sinner because of Adam. And don't think that because Adam fell off, you weren't going to fall off. You would have fell off too. <laughs> you do exactly what your wife tell you. Or you don't never listen to her. And now she mad at you. You so tyrant and so dominant. I had to slow down on myself. Man, I'm, I'm in here like a tyrant. I need to slow down. <laughs> huh? Dominant. It's your wife. You ain't supposed to be tyrant. You understand me? I was Right. <laughs> but see, there's, there's a thing called structure. And inside that structure, God created everything. God, Christ. What's the next one, um, Brooke? Christ, man, then what? Woman. That's how it go. Christ get his instructions from God. Man get his, his instructions from Christ. And the woman get her instructions from the man. That's how it go. And every, every time the woman or the man get outside of that structure, it's chaos. That's why you got to submit to your husbands and the husbands got to submit to Christ and Christ got to submit to God. The husband only do what Christ tell him, not his own merits. But the women, you can't tell them nothing. But we don't get into that. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about this last sin. <laughs> hey, Paulette, why are you looking at me like that? Hey, Paulette, look at me like this. She's like, <laughs> Let's talk about this last sin, and this last sin is called the sin of, watch this, sin of unbelief. Sin of unbelief. You should write that down. The sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief. What does the word unbelief mean, biblically? Because this is the most important sin. You thought getting drunk was the most important sin? You thought um, gays were the most, you know, the worst sin? No, this is the most important sin. It trumps all the other sins by far. Oh, you thought because they were gay, you thought they sin worse than your unbelief. Oh, no. Unbelief is so much worse. Cursing God, being gay, being drunk, pride, selfish. Our list of sins, we can go on and on. But this sin right here is the worst. The sin of unbelief. Who knows what that is biblically? Not accepting them into your heart? Don't believe in God? Okay, who else? They just said non believe as well. Who else? The sin of unbelief. This is the sin that destroy you. Because you didn't believe. We're going to figure this out. Here's what unbelief means biblically. In the group, I put in the group a dictionary, a biblical dictionary, ain't probably for beliefs. All right? And if you don't get this, you're going to be right where the road is broad. Where the road is broad at, Brooke? Hell. Hell. 
not believing in the DBR of Jesus Christ only. Alexis, that is right. Here's what it means biblically. Disbelief, the word unbelief mean, biblically means disbelief of the truth of the gospel, rejection of Christ as the savior of men and of the doctrines he taught, distrust of God's promises and faithfulness. Y'all got that? Y'all want me to say it again? What does unbelief mean biblically? It means this. Disbelief of the truth of the gospel. What's the gospel? First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. That Christ died for our sins. That he was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Disbelief of the truth of the gospel, rejection of Christ as the savior of men and of the doctrines he taught, distrust of God's promises and faithfulness. That's what unbelief means biblically. <laughs> and this is the worst one. This ain't the time to sleep. Because this one I had everybody tell in hell. Not you going over that dude's house or you over her house. This one right here. <laughs> DBR, Deja said. The word unbelief in the scriptures. Watch this, Donald. The word unbelief. See, when you write it, when you write it, divide this thing, you want to know how many times God used the word unbelief in what section of the Bible and why did he use it this many times over here versus this many times over here. The word unbelief appears in the entire Bible. How many times y'all think? How, how many? Wrong. Let me get the number. I'm not, I didn't say believe. I didn't say believing or non-trust. I said unbelief. That appeared in the entire Bible. Watch this. 16 times out of 16 verses. Were y'all aware of that? <laughs> 16 times out of 16 verses. Out of all the verses in the Bible, the entire Bible, not some of the, but the whole Bible, this word appears only 16 times. Why did God only use the word unbelief in the Bible 16 times? If it's such a big thing, I mean, if it's such a big deal like I'm trying to say it is, it should be in there 100,000 times, huh? Watch this. How many times you think the word unbelief, Donald, appears in the Old Testament? It, all right. You just give me an estimate and Brooke, one, you close. The word unbelief appears zero times in the Old Testament. <laughs> oh, that means something was altered? No, that means that the word just wasn't used in the Old Testament. <laughs> it was right there. Watch this. So that means that in the New Testament, zero times in Old Testament. And watch this. Unbelief appears 16 times in the New Testament. Ain't that something? So every time the word unbelief is mentioned in the Bible, it only mentioned it in the New Testament. Not in the Old Testament at all. Forty, Alexis say forty two. Then she switched to fifteen. <laughs> yeah, make your mind up. <laughs> Let's go to the scriptures. Y'all ready? Let's go to the scriptures. Let's read Romans. You need your Bible. You gotta have a Bible. 
Pull your Bible app out. How you know I ain't lying? This is how you test the spirit. This is how you cross-examine me. How you know I ain't just reading something to try to get you on my side? You got to pull your Bible out. Let's go to Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Romans chapter 14, verses 23. We're talking about the sin of unbelief. It reads, we're in the KJV. And that, and he that doubted is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is what? What does whatsoever mean, Ebony? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever's not a faith is sin. Are you moving the faith in everything you do? No, you're not. Guess what you're doing when you don't do it? You sinning. Man, I sure hope I can, you know. Man, man, nobody trying to come to, you know. You ain't got no faith. That's why you sinning. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If you do something out of faith, if you do something that's not in faith, guess what you're doing? You're sinning. So the sin of unbelief is no faith. Who got questions? This is the most important one. Everything you do has to be in faith. Even the smallest things like eating your food. You got to eat it in faith. Because if you don't eat it in faith, you're sinning. And you're going to be in hell. Where about a whole bunch of folks going to be right there. I'm not going to be right there. I'm doing, I'm, I'm so happy that I killed myself. I had to. I had to lay myself on the railroad track. And then I had to be the conductor of the train track, of the trains. And see myself laying on the train track and hit the gas. Uh, and run myself over. That's how far I was going. <laughs> and I thought I killed myself. But actually, I became alive through Christ Jesus and what he did on the cross. So through faith, by faith, of the, the, the sin of unbelief is not having faith. So what is faith? So you can stop sinning faithfully. <laughs> you don't got no faith. You cry about yourself. What is faith biblically? Who knows? Don't nobody know what faith is biblically? You've been in church a hundred years and you don't know what faith is biblically. Huh? Things are not seen as hopeful. It so took a long time to drag that body out church going, folks. This class, this ain't church. So you've been to church a hundred years. I'm expecting for you to get this stuff. Y'all know what the dictionary say faith is? This is gonna sound good. You ready? Donna, you ready? This is what the dictionary say faith is. The dictionary says that faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That sounds good, don't it? The dictionary says that faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That ain't biblical faith. <laughs> Brooke, that ain't what faith is biblically. That's man made, worldly, fleshly, enticed, lustful desires, faith. And that's why you lost. That's why you don't know what faith is. That's why the, the sin of unbelief will have you in hell, because you don't know what faith is. Oh, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I got full confidence in such and so you think that's faith. That ain't faith. Oh, I got full confidence in my abilities. I know when I walk in, that ain't faith. 
That's proud. That's pride and boastful and proud. You're going to have your tail in hell with a bunch of other folks, good moral people in hell. Let's read what faith is biblically so you can stop sinning and committing the sin of unbelief. And this is the one that's the most important sin of all. Let's go to it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. What up, what up, Victoria? Welcome. Trusting, Alexis, trusting, danger, trusting in the Lord. I see y'all on him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So we can get a biblical definition of faith. So we can stop playing with this. For your time expire. Your time gonna expire one day. You best believe that. You can try to live it up all you want to right now. Your time gonna expire. Hebrews 11 verse 1, it reads, this is what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> Y'all see the difference from biblical faith and Webster? You can't see it. If you can see it, it don't require faith. If I got faith in someone, then that's not faith. Well, we ain't never seen Jesus Christ. You ain't never seen nobody raised from the dead. It's our hope. <laughs> and that's how you activate God. He want to see you have that hope in him. If you can see somebody getting raised from the dead, you ain't no more faith. You saw it. And even then, when, he, when Jesus was raised from the dead, some of them still didn't believe. They thought all kind of stuff. They thought it was a ghost when he was walking on water. Is that a ghost? You want all these signs and wonders, and somebody come knock on the door right now, say, hey, man, I just came out that cemetery right there off Cocker Hill. You won't believe him. You'll laugh at him. You probably think he got on out some dope. You won't believe nothing. So now let's apply this concept to all sins of faith, the sin of unbelief. Let's apply this concept. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all sins. Do y'all hear me? For all sins. You don't try to run to yourself and correct yourself. No, you run to the cross of Christ through faith because he's the one that covered all sins. Y'all aware that? Who got questions? I feel like this done became a sermon. It's class. It's not church. One perfect sacrifice for every sin that has been committed. Every sin that was committed in the past, present, and future, Jesus shed his blood for the sins of the world. Every sin. Who got questions on that? That should be a big question. Every sin that has been committed by you in the past, Right now, and the sins that you're going to commit in the future, Jesus already died for the stuff you did in the future. Who got questions? Or who's that, who, how, who feel like that's hard to understand or grasp? Who got questions? Jesus Christ died for every sin that has ever been committed and the sin of Adam, the imputed sin, he died for that too. The sin that you inherited. He died for that too. The sins that you committed now, back in the past, back in the day, the sins that you forgot to say, Lord, forgive me for, all the sins ever committed in the world from the beginning of time to the end of time, Jesus died for it. Who got questions? Shoot, how Jesus died for something I ain't done? You mean, I mean, I could just run wild because I'm already forgiven. I'm already forgiven for those sins. I could just go on and run around. And you not saved. <laughs> because when you are saved, when you are saved, you don't continue in them same practices. So let's read about Jesus dying for every sin of the world. Y'all ready? Let's read Hebrews 10 and 10. I'm going to give y'all some scriptures so you can understand what this is. I'm a biblist. You know what a biblist is? 
Google it. You ain't never sat down in front of no biblis. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 10. This is what it reads. By which, I mean, by the which we will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once. For who? For all. Once for all. Y'all see that? By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. How many times did Jesus Christ offer his body up? Once. Well, what about the sins you ain't done? That means he got to go and offer his body again? Once for all. That's including future. Brittany say, and just because he died for our sins doesn't mean we should still commit those sins. The Bible say it's worse for the ones who know better. You ain't lying. The scriptures say where sin abound, grace abound even more. But don't give you no pass to go out and sin because a true Christian won't continue in that practice. The Holy Spirit won't allow you. When you truly believe and accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you will not go back to school or go back to these same things, doing the same thing you was doing before you got saved. And if you, were, if you do go back and do the same thing you was doing, guess what? And, you, and God provides you a way out and you don't take that way out, guess what? You don't believe. This is a feel-good moment for you. God gave you a way out so you can get away from that sinning and you don't do it. That's a feel-good situation for you. Have you really, you got to ask yourself, man, have I really accepted the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? I'm just doing what I want to do. They just said, by Jesus doing that, that should uh, want to make people do right. Absolutely. Go to Hebrews 10 and 12, two verses down, same book. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. One sacrifice for what? Sins for what? Forever. You know, it's kind of baffling somebody say, man, uh, Jesus didn't die for your future sins. All right, then he ain't died for you because you weren't alive when he died. You in the future. <laughs> And we in the future. So I guess our sins don't get clean then. You say he don't die for future sins, that mean us too then. We want not. Brittany say them feel good moments will have you in hell. You ain't lying. Let's go to 1 John 2 and 2. You just want to feel, every time you, you never want to sacrifice yourself. You don't want to give up your own lustful desires. That's weak. You ain't no woman. You ain't no man. It's easy to do what you want to do. Once you try giving up something you, you know you can do. See how tough you are then. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Let's try that. Jamal states, why does the Bible say we cannot be forgiven for blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Luke 12 and 10. We gave a scripture. He say, he say, why can't you be forgiven from blasphemy from the Holy Spirit? Because blasphemy from the Holy Spirit is a person that has rejected who? Christ. And that's the sin of what? Sin of unbelief. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is not you talking down on the Holy Spirit, but not believing. <laughs> you rejected the Holy Spirit. So your unbelief of your sin is blasphemy and you're not forgiven for unbelief. <laughs> only, the only time you are credited the blood work of Jesus Christ on the cross for us is when you accept the payment he did. If you don't accept that payment, guess what? You're full of sin. Let's keep going. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. I'm going to give you scriptures today, Ebony. 
I ain't got a lot of time. I got to get you in and out. Revelations chapter 1, verse 5. Who got questions? Who have questions? That was a great question, Jamal. Great question. Who got questions? Revelations chapter 1, verse 5, it reads, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. What washed us from sins? What about you stop doing, doing your sinning? Are you washed? You're not. Why y'all don't get this? You're not going to stop sinning. Why is it so difficult to understand? Why is it so hard? You can't work your sin off. The only thing that can wash you clean from the crimson stain of sin is Jesus' blood. That's the only thing. And the only way you activate that, the only way you can get that payment that he did for us on the cross is by faith, believing in accepting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you don't get that payment, if you don't receive that payment that was made for you by Christ, guess what? You're going to be in hell and you're going to be convicted of every sin ever made. Question, Donald say, so baptism doesn't wash your sins away? Absolutely not. Baptism does not wash your sins away. Not in the grace age. The only thing that washes your sins away is the blood atonement sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and that is it, nothing else. Nothing else. You got to understand something, y'all. You got to get this. By us having a sinful nature, because of one man, we are already condemned. Who's that one man, ain't Paulette? Adam. Because of Adam, we are already condemned, Brooke. We are condemned already because of Adam. We are full of sin right now, and we ain't done nothing because of Adam. That's called imputed sin. We're already condemned. You are naturally condemned. Who got questions? But those who believe by the faith of the Bible, not the faith of the dictionary, <laughs> in Jesus Christ is not condemned. One man condemned us, one man saved us. Trust in what he did. Adam messed it all up. That's right. And watch this. And we just carried on. We just carry on the mess up. We done worse sins than Adam. Adam, did, Adam just, God told Adam not to do something as far as eat the, eat the forbidden fruit, and he went and ate it. He ain't go out and murder nobody. He ain't go out and rape nobody. He wasn't trying to shoot up on you and get your wife. You understand me? He just went and ate from the tree that God told him not to. We took what Adam did and elevated it. Elevated it. <laughs> we we would have done the same thing and worse. If you could have done better, guess, guess what? Guess who um, God would have put there? He would have put you there. It would have been, it would have been uh, uh, whoever it is who think they wouldn't have done it. Your name, it wouldn't have been Adam. It would have been your name. Let's read about that. Being condemned already. And through Christ, we're not condemned anymore because of belief. John chapter 3, verse 18. John chapter 3, verse 18. <laughs> Jamal said he wasn't yanking that chain. Y'all don't know what that is. We're going we're to let that be where that's at. <laughs> He wasn't yanking on that chain. John chapter 3, 
verse 18. It reads, He, watch this, y'all. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh oh. Do we say, but he that believeth on him is not condemned? Did it say he that stopped sinning is not condemned? Why did it say that? We were told to sin not. Don't go out and sin. Stop sinning. Why did it say right here, he that sin not is not condemned? Why did it say that? Why, why did it say, he, why, I mean, why does it say he that believeth on him is not condemned? Jesus died for all the sins. All you got to do is just believe in what he did. See, when you believe in what he did, you are cleansed from all those sins that you're doing. Who got questions in that? I said John chapter 3 and 18. Uh-uh, John chapter 3 and 18. Oh, y'all understand that? Brooke, does this make sense or not? Am I saying something too, am I talking too educated? It says right here, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Why did God say he that stopped sinning, put down their sinful ways, stop being a mean person, and, and, and them people are not condemned? Why did he say that? But that's what you're doing? You got your faith in what you're doing. That's called idolatry. And all false gods go to hell. You become your own god and you're a false god, by the way. And that's why you're going to be in hell with the rest of the people who think they can work themselves out of sin. You can't earn your way into heaven. That's right, Jamal. I don't care how much sin you stop. You are sinful by nature. Do y'all understand that? Who got questions? You are sinning right now. You have two ways to pay for your sins. You got two ways to pay for your sins. Two ways to pay for your sin. Who want to guess the first way? Hey, Paulette. You got two ways to pay for your sin. Give me one way. <laughs> Donald say, get your head chopped off. No. <laughs> Sacrifice yourself? Yeah. No. Believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you got two ways to get your sins covered. Either trust in what Jesus did by faith, or number two, what's that number two? Going to hell. You're going to pay for it either way. <laughs> There's consequences for your guilty verdict. Your, the verdict is guilty in front of a holy God. Do y'all understand? And watch this. It's going to take an eternity to pay for your sins committed. That means it never ends. So you're going to be in a never-ending spot forever paying for your sins. That's how long it takes to pay for it. Forever. <laughs> and that's in hell. Or you can stop playing with this. Trust in what Jesus Christ did for you on your behalf. Huh? This class is not church. You understand me? Jesus Christ. 
the son of man. Huh? The bright morning star. <laughs> huh? The faithful and true witness. The I am that I am. The Alpha and Omega. The Aleph and the Taf. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The hope of glory. <laughs> <laughs> So, what is it that really sent people to hell, y'all? Let's wrap this up, bring this home. What is it that really bring, bring people to hell? Donald said rebellious. No. What you say, Donald? I really can't hear you. Now. I'll wait till you come in here. I really can't make out what he's saying. Oh, not believing. <laughs> So, what really sent people to hell? Don't say not believing. Not believing in what? Going to the stove? Oh, I, oh, I can, I can, I can make it in life. And they was buried. According. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just. We just went over all the sins that caused us folks to go into hell this whole series. Did we go over it? We went, we used seven parts of the series to go over all the sins that we do that cause people to go to hell. Sin of omission, sin of commission, sin of disposition, huh? The, the uh, presumptuous sin. Etc. Jamar say seems like an easy choice. They just say not believing in the DBR. I don't understand, like, how is it that, because this, this is what they're going to ask you, how is it that if Jesus paid for all the sins, right, how is it that we can still sin and be in hell and Jesus paid for it. If Jesus paid for all the sins and we can still sin and be in hell, how's that? Say that again, mama. For not doggone believing. For not believing. Did you know that the scripture states that if you are guilty of one sin, you are guilty of them all. Oh, y'all aware of that? So why are you being boastful and proud? Oh, I'm, I'm half I don't smoke no dope. Have you sinned before? Yes. Then you smoke dope too then. Oh, I'm happy. I, I, I didn't wait. I waited. So I was mad before. I, you know. Did you think about it though? Then you guilty of having it. Ain't no way around it. Man, that's wrong how you went and killed all them people. Have you been angry with your brother? Then you a murderer. Just like him. You can't talk that talk with, to a holy God. You guilty just like him. It don't matter. The rapist or you told a little white lie. It don't matter. In God's eyes, you're a rapist too. <laughs> you're going to be in hell where you deserve. You don't care about what Jesus did. You care about yourself. You selfish, arrogant, hell-bound, child of hell person. That's where you're going. Fast. Fascinating. The light hitting the floor when you cut the light switch on. Now, hi, that's fast. You know, you cut the light on. Slick, everything light up. You're going to be in hell faster than that. <laughs> huh?
Right. The sin, the, our sinful flesh, our body is sinful because of Adam. That's why it's impossible to please God in the flesh because it's sin. You can't be sinless in this body. So stop boasting like you can. Like you get some pass because you stopped doing a few things. You spitting on what Christ did. You better run to the cross and let Christ get the glory, not you. Because you committed one sin, you were back guilty of that same sin you stopped doing. <laughs> and this class is not church, and you're right, ain't hey, Paulette. This is gonna sound like a sermon. Who got questions? <laughs> Let's get back to study with grace, a Bible study, a biblical truth. Huh? When you sin once, you have tran transgressed all of the sins. Y'all want to read about that? All right. Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. James chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. James chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. It reads, watch this. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. We know what the law is. We're not getting to the law. We went over that in part six or seven of this. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou if now if thou commit no adultery, yet thou kill, thou art become a transgression of the law. If you kill, I mean if you don't commit adultery, but then you kill, you transgress the whole law. You just as guilty. And the stuff you stop doing comes back on you when you do something else that's against the transgression of the law. When you get mad at your brother, you murder them with your anger. Jesus said that's murder. So the, you stop doing this, but once you got anger at him, guess what? Now you're guilty of the stuff you stopped doing again. And you thought you was over with. You thought because you stopped laying up with him, you were good. Now, did you, did you, uh, were you being respectful to your parents? All right, you back, you back laying up now. You can't miss God with nothing. He's holy. James chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Victoria said, can't be doing that. It's no longer all of the countless amounts of sins that is against a holy God that condemns us. It's no longer that anymore. And the reason why it's no longer that is because what? Because of Jesus took care of that. But because of another man, you are set free for condemnation. You're set free from damnation. And that man is called Jesus Christ. 100% God, 100% man. Born of a virgin. He had to be born of a virgin. He had to be born of a a uh, a. Uh, uh, the spirit of God. Because he would have been born sinful if he wasn't. Brittany, Tori say hypocrite. Can't be that. Brittany say, that's why no sin bigger than the next. When you commit one, you commit them all. Tori say pure, 100% pure. But we talk that talk, but we still doing the same thing. Like, don't talk that talk, and you still doing the same thing. Huh? Let's read Romans chapter 5 and 17. I'm going to show you how, how Jesus Christ, how he, because of him, we free. Romans 5 and 17, it reads, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. You understand that? 
Let's go down. Look at 19. Same book. Go to verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Ain't probably who was that one man's disobedience? Ain't probably who was that one man's disobedience where many were made sinners? Huh? Adam. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Who's that one, mama? Obedience of one? Jesus Christ. All right, go to the same book. Go up to number 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded unto many. Y'all see this? One man destroyed it, one man brought it back and some. You trying to... <laughs> You think you because you stop doing this and doing that, you good. You not. We all filthy up in here. And I done stopped a lot of things. But I'm still guilty of them all. And I know I am. That's why I run to the cross of Jesus Christ. You feel me? I run to him fast. Lord, have mercy on me. Please. I'm not better than the next man. I don't care how much of a better walk I'm walking. I'm still sinful, and I need your son, my redeemer, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ saved me from the penalty of God's wrath. But not only that, he sanctified me. Not only did he save me from sin, from the penalty and punishment of sin, he also saved me from the presence of sin. And now I'm glorified through Christ Jesus because of what he did. <laughs> Don't glorify. You understand me? And until you get this, until you accept this, I mean, these are the last days. You plan. The king coming back. He gonna come get his folks. And you're gonna be left here in the tribulation era. That's just like hell. <laughs> Well, the Holy Spirit ain't going to be here. Ain't going to be nothing but the devil and his crew running wild. Right now, the devil on the chain. But, but when we get up out of here, if we alive for the rapture, oh, man, the devil going to run rain. And it's over with for you. You better not utter the words Jesus Christ in. In the devil's eyes. Huh? You better get this now while you're in grace and stop taking this, using this as an advantage. You sitting on it like everything cool. All right. Having faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross and that alone is what saves us and this is the faith that pleases God. My mama just read that you can't please God in the flesh, right? Let me show you how you please God with the faith. Let's read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I got scriptures for y'all today, don't I? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Can I hold him? Come on, man. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. This is my little kin folk. His name Dallas. You understand me? I got his back. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must what? Believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that digitally seek him. I take that. <laughs> you got to believe in who he is. Why didn't it say stop sinning? 
Why did it say stop sinning? He said believe. Why did the scripture keep telling us believe, believe, believe? Why, what's going on? Once you believe in Christ, all the sins that we have done and we're going to continue to do has been wiped clean by the blood of Christ. That's the gospel we preach. <laughs> That's the truth. The moment you have faith in what Jesus did, Dallas, because he did it for you too, man. What he did on the cross will be the exact moment you are sinless. Uh-oh, y'all ain't know about that sinless part. I got to put Dallas down when I talk about that. You are sinless at that moment. You accept Jesus Christ and what he did. You are now spiritually clean. You don't die. You can't sin no more. Right now I have the Holy Spirit in me and I cannot sin spiritually. But I can, I can sin in my flesh. That's why I'm able to sin right now because of my flesh. But spiritually, I cannot sin. Do y'all understand the difference? I'm made up of three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. When I accept Jesus Christ, blood, atoning sacrifice, I am cocooned and wrapped around the Holy Spirit, my soul and my spirit. But my body is not. My body is still sin because of Adam. That's why I wrestle my flesh every day. That's why I try my best not to get angry. And I, I got I to gotta kill myself to Christ every day because I'm still in this tent, this body. Y'all understand that? But when Jesus come on the day of the Lord, when he come back on the rapture, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get a new body to complement our sinless spirit and soul. Well, we can't sin. We can't think of a thought of a sin. We can't do nothing but exemplify the glory of Christ and oh, what a body's going to be. That body's going to be able to look in God face to face, literally. Oh, there it is. We got a question. Go on to the mic. It did, I forgot this was class. It's not church. But the guys do look good, dog. <laughs> That's her. What's your name, Sue? All right, uh, my name is Breath. I go to Cedar Valley College. My question is, when we do have our glorified body and we see God face to face, is our hair going to turn white? The question is, when we do get our glorified body, is our hair going to turn white when we see God face to face? We're going to have a body that's going to be able to withstand God's glory. We're going to already be white, probably. <laughs> we're going to be in such a way that we're going to be able to stand in his presence and chill. Now, if it, are we going to turn white? I don't know. We might be all white. We might just look like this. The, the scriptures say we're going to be like Jesus when he was glorified. We're going to be like Jesus. In his, here it is right here, Brooke. We're going to be like Jesus was in his glorified body. So we got to go back in the scriptures and, and look at how was Jesus when he came back after he resurrected from the dead. He was able to go through the walls and his disciples were able to see him without, you know, you know, so you just never know. We might, the glorified body is going to be able to operate in the spiritual realm and the physical realm. See, God is a spirit, so our glorified bodies will be able to operate in the spiritual realm. Right? But we also, we, we also have a physical body, a, a body of uh, flesh and bones. So we're going to be able to operate in the physical realm as well. So the new earth and the new heaven are going to be a spiritual, physical realm. Where we can operate in both at the same time. No sin, not a thought, not a suggestion. I know right now, like, how in the world? I don't know either, but look, it's going to happen. I just got hope and faith in that. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. It reads, he that committed, watch this, commit I said, we're talking about when you accept Christ, you are sinless spiritually in, in your soul. Watch this. He that committed sin, this is 1 John 3, 8 through 9. He that committed sin 
is of the devil. For the devil sinned it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Watch this. Whosoever is born of God, do it not commit sin. For his seed, for his seed remaining in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Did y'all know that? Did y'all like that? So stop, stop trying to work your way out, <clears throat> out of sin because you can't, mama. That don't mean you stop trying not to sin. Absolutely. You do your best to try not to sin. But don't you think, don't, don't you praise your works is what I'm telling you. Because you don't slow down and cut back on a lot of things. You don't give that praise. You rejoice in what Jesus did, how he delivered you from those things. Not, you know, praising yourself, patting yourself on the back like you did something. No. If it weren't for Christ Jesus, you'll still be that same person you was. <laughs> and when you got Christ Jesus in you, ain't no more sinning. God can't sin. The Holy Spirit indwells in you the moment you believe and heard the truth, the gospel. What's the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 1 through, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. For Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Nothing else. Not your offering. Not your tithes. Not the choir songs. None of that. You are a sinner by nature. That's who you are. Just like you are a human by nature. You ain't a dog by nature. You can only act human. You are doing human things when you're not doing nothing at all, right or wrong. If you're just sitting down chilling, are you, are you doing human things? Why is that? Because you're a human. The same way. You are sinful by nature. <laughs> I can't do dog things because I'm sitting down acting like a dog. I'm still a human. I'm just a human acting like I'm a dog. I'm just a, I'm just a, a, a simple person that stopped sinning, but I'm still sinning. In the flesh. Who got questions? Who got questions? Let's keep going. This is how you know, Donald, if someone is saved. So we can wrap this up. So you can understand the sin of unbelief. You understand? Jesus said in John 14 and 15, if you love me, Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. He said that in John 14 and 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. What's his commandments? Let's go to it. Let's read about it. Go ahead, mama. What's his commandments? Love thy neighbor. Like what? No, like thyself. Like thyself. Not love your neighbor like you love yourself. No. Love your neighbor like yourself. Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. It reads, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's how you know if, if you really say you're doing that right there. That's how you test your own self. Are you loving thy neighbor like thyself? If, if they hungry, are you giving them something to eat? If they thirsty, are you giving them something to drink? Because if you was thirsty and you were looking for a snack, you want no snack in there, you would like for somebody to give you a snack. Huh? Oh, this, y'all, y'all, y'all want it. Y'all, we might as well just wrap this on up. Huh? This class, this is not church. God looks for faith. You understand that, Veronica? Veronica Ann. God looks for faith. What it is, ain't Paulette, is that you have to not come to God 
by faith. And if you do that, then you're going to be in hell. But if you accept what Christ did for you, then you receive the payment, Jocelyn, of Christ's blood atonement, which washed you clean from all the sins, right, that had your tail in hell. If you don't believe in Christ, but you stop sinning, well, see, if you don't believe in Christ, right, and you stop cursing, guess what? You're still going to be in hell. If you don't believe in Christ, but you ain't committed adultery, guess what's going to happen? You're still going to be in hell. If you stop having sex before you was married, right, but you don't believe in Christ, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be in hell. <laughs> Because those things don't blot you clean. It's the blood of Christ that blot you clean. And the only way to get that payment is by trusting, by faith, in what Jesus did. Yes. Oh, but when you trust in what he did, guess what happened to you then? You become a new person. You don't want to go sleep around with him or her no more. Will you, will you fall off? You might. You might fall off every now and then. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> huh? What happens is that means that you ain't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You really don't believe that. You believe in yourself. You're selfish. Self-centered. Anybody know some self-centered folks in here? I do. A bunch. I was one of them. I mean, I didn't show it that much, but I knew in my heart I was. Give me me. You understand me? <laughs> huh? I ain't probably let you self-centered. Huh? What is, what is this? I asked, I asked A. Paulette, and she self said what she said. <laughs> A. A. Paulette, huh? Well, you know, if you're guilty of one sin, you're guilty of them all. As long as you got what? If you if you ain't accepted Jesus' blood atoning sacrifice, then you will sin him. And watch this. Even after you accepted his, his blood atoning sacrifice, you are still sinning in your flesh. That's why we die. And that's why we die. You want to know why there's a problem going on? Because of Adam. That's why. Any problem that you go against that you see, Adam. But thank God for Christ because he came and reversed it and he put and some on it. He put the cherry on top. The sin of unbelief in Jesus Christ will put you in hell. That's the, you're going to burn in hell with your sin. That's the only sin that'll put you in hell. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Unbelief in what Jesus did on the cross. That's what puts you in hell. Let's read about it. Ain't no sense of talking. Galatians chapter 3 and 26. Galatians chapter 3 and 26. For ye all, for you are all the children of God by what? By faith in Christ Jesus. I mean, you got to understand this. God paid for all the sin that we have, that, that, that will and has ever been committed by a human being in full by Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? Not of you, not of your works, not because you stop having uh, 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 sex, not because you stop doing this and doing that. No. If you don't believe in Christ, I don't care how much sin you don't stop. You're going to be in hell. Because you rejected Jesus Christ, blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. And through Jesus, our sins are wiped clean. It is you not choosing to accept faith in Jesus Christ will put you in hell. That's why that sin is singular. 
part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one of all the sins. If you stopped all those sins that you watched and all them parts, but don't believe in Christ, you're going to be in hell. That's the sin that ultimately damns you to hell. Donald, they just say, God loves us like for real, for real. He is so wonderful and marvelous. Thank you, Lord. That's the ultimate sin that damns you to hell, the sin of unbelief. Watch this. Let's go to John 16, verses 8 through 11. John 16, verses 8 through 11. And we got four minutes remaining and we're done. John chapter 16, verses 8 through 11. I'm going to show you how this is the sin that condemns you to hell, to damnation. On the way to everybody get there. So you can get up out your own works. You think your own work stops something. They do not. Get up out of that theology. Y'all made it? It reads, John 16, chapter 8 through 11. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Did y'all see that? Repro reprove means like he's going to judge the world. All right. So let me say, let me say the word judge. And when he has come, he will judge the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So those, there's three things. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to judge the world. What's those three things? Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now watch what, because this is Jesus talking, right? Watch what Jesus say about sin. Of sin, he's going to judge the world uh, uh, of sin because what? They believe not in me. Y'all see that? Not that they, gonna, they believe, in, uh, they're going to stop drinking. They don't stop, you know, they don't stop being so angry. No. When it comes to sin, he's going to judge the world on the ones that didn't believe. Do y'all get this? Or it's just me? I can't be the only one in here with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Huh? So he's a judge right now. Absolutely. That's that's right. He, he he could judge. He that's right. But he could have. He said, I don't judge, but if I was to judge, my judging would be true. Right, through his father. He don't do nothing without his father. He submitted to Christ is submitted to God all the way. And man should be submitted to Christ just like that. And watch this. Women supposed to submit to men just like Christ. <laughs> All these different sins that we do, Jesus paid for it. In full, y'all. They just say, I mean, Brenda say, very clear, clear as day. They just say, yes, so clear. When he come to judge the world of sin, he's going to judge the world of sin about the people that did not believe in him. Because when you believe in him, you, you get to no sins. When you don't believe in him, you get to all the sins. That's how they work. If you believe in Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, you are not guilty of all the sins. If you don't believe in him and you stop doing a lot of the sins, you are still guilty of sin because you didn't believe in him. And once you uh, uh, break one sin, you're guilty of a mile. So you're back guilty of the sins you thought you stopped doing. You're still guilty. So you might as well believe while you got a chance. And look, and you know you believe because your actions reflected. You can't just say out your mouth, 
Well, I believe in Jesus. All right. You got to show that. You got to study your scriptures. You got to make this a priority. Everything else a priority. I know when somebody believes. And that's why this gateway is narrow, because they talk that talk with their mouth. You don't believe. You're an imposter, a boot licker. I know what you are. You fake. Huh? This ain't no game. It's real. This ain't play. I'm not, I'm not up here for playing around. <laughs> huh? When you are truly saved, you become a new creation. In the old, you die. You understand that? When you believe, when you get rid of the sin of unbelief and start believing by faith in what Jesus did, then you get a new creation. The old you die. You don't go back to the old desires and lustful pleasures and continue in those same practices. If you are doing that and you, and you do have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God gives you a way out. You got to make the decision to take that road out. If you don't make that decision to make, take that road out and you continue to stay in that same era, you didn't believe. You're going to be in hell. You're going to love the world, your own desires, or you're going to love Christ and do what he said. Stay under structure. Oh, you're going to burn in hell where nobody can save you. Let's read the last two scriptures. Second Corinthians. Deja said, when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I just be cheesing, thinking about what Jesus Christ done for us. Brittany say yes. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yes. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. It reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Watch this. Old things are passed away. Behold, what? All things are become new. Huh? And all things are of what? God, who had reconciled us to himself by who? And had given to us the ministry of what? Reconciliation through Jesus Christ. And what, what is that? Through his blood. Y'all understand this? First John, last scripture, chapter three, verses four through six. First John, chapter three, verses four through six. Don't get caught up in that sin of unbelief, because that's the one that's going to have you in hell. You know, unbelief that appears zero times in the Old Testament. But 16 times in the New Testament. 1 John chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. It reads, watch this. Because you say you got to indwell another Holy Spirit and you say you say, oh, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the dead, burial, resurrection. Yeah, you say that right now. We're going to give you eight hours from now. You don't meditate day and night. Stop claiming Jesus Christ and you don't believe. You're making us look bad. Claim what you want to claim. Claim your false gods and try to throw it on Christ. It reads, everyone who commits sin practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed so that he might take away sins. And there is no sin in him. Watch this. Everyone, that's a some people, everyone. 
Everyone, now, it, almost. Everyone who remains in him does what? Does not sin. Everyone who sins has not seen him or known him. All right, let's wrap this thing on up. That wrapped it up. Eight part series of you're going to burn in hell with your sin. Hope y'all like this series. Go back on my timeline on Facebook and watch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now eight. And we working, ain't we? I ain't, I'm not boasting of what I'm doing. I'm just happy that Christ saved me. So I'm, I'm going to teach the gospel. I right, what about my text season come around? You're going to be teaching the gospel? Yes, sir. I'm going to multitask. You getting your taxes prepared, you're going to be getting the gospel at the same time. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I, like coming, I like coming in. It's good people in there. They talk about God. You understand me? Who got questions about this series? Who got questions about the sin of unbelief? That's a cold one, ain't it? I say that one for last on purpose. I had to highlight all the sins that we do first and then bring it back to Christ on how he take care of it. All we got to do is just believe. Ooh, that's easy. That's so easy. That's no work. That ain't working. And then on top of that, go watch The Faith of Christ versus The Faith in Christ on my timeline and on, and on YouTube. And we learned that the faith of Christ is the faith that what? that Jesus had on our behalf. Who got questions and comments? Nobody got nothing? Just eight parts. Anybody happy about what Jesus did? Let's say that then. <laughs> get some up out of y'all. This class, if I, if I can get some good dialogue out of y'all, that'd be good so you know they can know this class and not church. You glad you're covering the DVR? I'm telling you. But you know when somebody's really covering the DVR, they action show it. What you say, mama? Why is there so many sins? I don't know. God holy. <laughs> God is holy. That's how holy he is. You can't even think something that, that, that's not in the realm of Christ. You out of there. <laughs> <laughs> right, God already know everything. He got see God know the choices we're gonna make already. He let us have that choice. He just know the choices we're gonna do because he in the future right now. We ain't made it the future yet. It's your choice, but he know the choice you're gonna make because he saw it. He's omnipresent. He's in the future right now. He know what we're going to do 10 days from now. He saw it. He in the future. Oh, that's what they're going to do. So they can come back to the present and tell us about what's going on in the future. Because he's God. He's not controlled and bound by time like we are. He made time. They just say, I'm very excited. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Our next series is going to get deep. They say, man, you want to, we should learn about heaven now, man. You don't send us to hell so much. <laughs> we should learn about heaven now. I got something in store for the next series. I put it in the group. I also post it on Facebook. They just say, I'm cheesing now. <laughs> it, just, it just, you know, that joy you get being saved, that comes from the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That comes from the Holy Spirit. That happiness you got, man, I'm, I'm happy. I'm saved. <laughs> All right. May the grace of God be with you and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until next time.